everybody, it's Pets, it's J-Dog. And with only one week left in the AFL season, we have got a bumper episode for you. It's the Round 22 Review with Peps and J-Dog at the home of Football Lace Out. And for everybody listening to us tonight, watching us tonight, listening to you on your headphones, in the car, on the smart speaker, wherever you are, thank you very much for joining us. You're with your host, Chris Pepper, the 377-game superstar of the East Keeler Football Club. And the co-host with the most, the great man, the grand poo bar, Jamie the J-Dog Wallace. How are you, kind sir? And how are you feeling after another massive Port Adelaide win? Uh, Peps, I am well. Hello, everyone out there. Um, coming to us on one of our last shows for the season, Peps. It's coming to an end. It's coming to an end for some, but not for others. No, but um, Peps, I am... Uh, what a, what a great week of footy for a Port Adelaide supporter and also if you're a Brisbane supporter. But I tell you what, that, that Sunday game left me energised. That was one of the best derbies I've ever seen. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about Melbourne Adelaide. Ah, yeah, that one there. That was, that a, was uh, it's a scintillating. Good, are you a derby guy or a derby guy? I don't know what it is. Does it really matter to you? Derby, derby, tomato, derby, tomato. Derby. Exactly right. As long as it's a good game. Bit, bit, bit upset there wasn't too much Dale Kickett. Uh, Michael Gardner, Pavlich sort of action. No. But hey, you know what? It was a great game uh, and so much to talk about. A huge weekend of footy. So um, like I said, we're going to go through many, many parts today. We're going to give our weekend wrap up. Obviously, the ladder is going to be there and there's been lots of movement. And even with one round to go, it's still not locked in. We'll give you all the moves, the snakes and the ladders to go with that. We're spinning some magnets. We've got the rising star. We're going around the grounds with the newsbreaker himself, Jamie. We're going to splash some cash. We're also going to go into the retirement side of things as well, too, because they're starting to pick up as the last weekend of football kicks in. Injury updates, the listener questions, one week at a time. And you know what? We'll even throw some bits and pieces in there as well, too. So there's absolutely bucket loads to get into. And before we do, I'm going to hand it over to the big fella. Joe Dog, where do you want to start this one off, my friend? Um, let's just start off with uh, the big news coming out of Melbourne. Uh, we did fuck all. What did you do? I did nothing. Uh, <laughs> I literally did fuck all too. Um, no Olympics. No you, didn't go, you didn't go to any uh, engagement parties, did you, Peps, over the weekend? I did go to one in St Kilda. Yeah, uh, good. Not good. that one, but I went to another one. Was it a brothel? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was good. Group therapy? Group therapy. Yeah, it was a group, it was a group therapy session. Yes. Dickheads. Dickheads. What were they thinking? Words cannot express how dumb that is. What it was? It was bullshit, mate. $350,000 in fines for attending that. Good, she's, good she's one. I'll tell you what, the AFL would be proud with that fine. Hey, wasn't the only one out partying that night or, or that, that whole weekend. We had a bit of a uh, bit of... Bit of meatball action. Oh, the meatball was on the fireball. Did you see that? I did. <laughs> the meatball was on the fireball, Mr. Prestia. What were oh, you thinking? What a crack. And then you had the uh, the impromptu dance party as well. Not at the Peacock Hotel. Make that clear. It wasn't his pub that wasn't no, opened up. No. But there were people gathered at the front because they're dickheads. But you know what? He's complaining that he's been mistaken identity, that he was the Peacock. Yes, you've had your wall spray painted, but think of all the free publicity this bloke's got over the last number of weeks. <laughs> like, if you tried to buy primetime real estate television coverage, it costs you thousands. Channel 7 not more, would... Not more than your 30, 30 grand that you've probably lost in takings. Well, we all know it now. We all know it. Where, where, where are you going when we all when this thing blows over? I'm going to the Peacock, of course. You're going to the Peacock. You're going to the Cock. Love the Cock. Cock uh, is a great place to be. Peps, how was your weekend? What did you get up to? Not much. Told you. The Olympics are finished. Yep. Um, that's about it. Do you work on your short game in the backyard? Nah, nah. Uh, but I no, mowed the lawns, did some stuff yeah. in the garden, took the kids yep. for a kick of the footy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Showed them how it was lace out. <laughs> just like Dad, you, just, just like I used to deliver it ten years ago. Uh, nah, you know what? We enjoyed it for what it was worth. It was a great weekend. Uh, watched the D's. Got nervous, especially when Adelaide kicked five in a row. I thought, here we go again. <laughs> uh, but they got over the line and now we're just looking forward to the last weekend of footy because let's just get into it mate because it's going to be an absolute bumper week of football because if you have a look at the ladder mm. moving into this week yeah 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 it's it's pretty chock-a-block there's movement at the top there's movement at the bottom i still don't think anybody wants to take that last final eight spot why do you wait 22 weeks to determine whether you want to play finals or not 
It's, it's incredible. It's incredible, isn't it? Melbourne decided to get their bearings together and say, let's lock it in with 10 weeks to go rather than 10 minutes. <laughs> and finally, they worked it out. Oh, if you actually work hard at the start, you get it back at the end. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it's, been a, it's been a massive weekend, massive ladder. So let's have a look at it right now. Okay, mm. so here we go. These are on top on 66 points. And if they beat Geelong this week, who are on 64, they will take top position in the first time since 1964. And, Jamie, Mm -hmm. do you know what happened the last time the Ds were on top in 1964? Uh, Polio was cured? Uh, Probably, but also they won the premiership. So there might be a bit of uh, an omen in that. Imagine if you you guys don't win the premiership. Like, how can you go all season so strong and then just – Anyway, I don't know, Jamie. You're a Port Adelaide supporter. You could tell us how many times you've had that happen over the last 10 years. We're Geelong are in second. Port Adelaide. So any of those teams can jump to the top. Western Bulldogs, they are whimpering at the moment. They are they're lost. They're at the lost dogs home. Like yeah. They're looking for an owner because they're not owning their game at the moment. And those four teams play each other this weekend. How cracking is that to finish the season off? Mm. Chris Lyons and Sydney both sitting on 56. Now, this is where the magic is going to happen, and this is where the excitement starts to build. The Sydney Swans on 56, which is good. GWS on 42 and Essendon on 40. Those two teams have locked in a position in the final eight as we speak now. But yep. we've still got wet toast, soggy biscuits, lost to Fremantle. The wankers with anchors on the weekend, they weren't wankers. They were fantastic. Cracking derby. Just underneath them is Fremantle. Both those teams can make the finals. Fremantle have to win. West Coast have to win. It's as simple as that if they want to make it. I think I think it's going to be hard for both of them. So first time in a long time, two Perth teams not making finals. Um Hey, for Peps, before we go on, fair play to West Coast. They have been trying to fall out of the eight now for about 10 weeks, and they've finally done it. So, and, and Essendon well, been trying to well fall done. into it. And well Essendon done. trying to fall into it as well too. So that's another thing there. Only lost like seven of their, of their last 10 matches, West Coast, and they've still managed to just. And they're even playing them at home. Like <laughs> <laughs> they, They're losing at home. That's how bad it's got. Yeah. Two weeks in a row. Yeah. Uh, Richmond uh-huh. have now been rebranded because they're not going to play finals, which is great for the AFL. Gone. Uh, so underneath them is Shit Kilda or St. Kilda. Richmond are now Bitchmond. And uh, round of applause for me. Yeah, what did you do? Because I called it how many weeks ago? 10, 12 weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, you called it a while. Call? I called it. Now everybody's looking at me going, Peps, you're a dickhead. Superstar. All right. Uh, Carl Tank, they, they, they couldn't get any lower. Or oh, could they? Yeah, Teague's still there. Poor bloke has had no support. He's going to get flicked out. And you watch, oh, they'll get another Messiah and he'll get stabbed in the back and, oh, we'll get another Messiah. <laughs> Hawthorne, they've beaten nobody over the last few weeks. Gold Coast, <laughs> can they get another win? <laughs> Collingwood, they're just poo. Adelaide, poo. North Melbourne, they're the best of the poo. But unfortunately, they did nothing in the first seven weeks. They got a wooden spoon first time in, I think, 41 years. So yeah. go on your north. Going to get the best player in the league next year uh, to start things off. And I think you've got a better future than a number of those clubs up in front of you. So that, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, is the ladder for round 22. One weekend of footy uh, coming in. Now, a couple of questions, couple of things have um, come in on the chat. First of all, sure. Charlie Keegan. Thank Christ, Frio didn't fuck it up. Well, we <laughs> absolutely. Are. Absolutely. Could you imagine if they stuffed that and we had to have wet? It'd be a final seven and wet toast in that. Oh, that third and fourth quarter was not pleasant to watch as oh. a neutral, but going for Frio. Now, here we go. Craigie Wessels. Now, Craigie Wessels is from the United States of America. He's watching our show as we speak. We're international. That's how far we go. <laughs> Good evening, Jets. Going to enjoy your show tonight until he goes live later on. Does anybody want to play Port or Brisbane? Uh, yeah, I'll play them both. They've got to get past us, not the other way around. And Port, uh, will, Port will play with themselves. And he'll be to. very – and I'll tell you what, Craig is a massive Nakaya Cockatoo fan and he would have been loving what he brought to the uh, game last week as well too. Okay, uh, Jolly Michael says, as long as Port lose, it won't matter who wins Cats versus Ds. Both will play at home. Yes, 
That's what we're looking for. Craigie Jones is also in here. Stats are against the minor premiers. We haven't won anything yet, Craig, so just calm the farm, all right? So lots of things, lots to talk about. We've had a look at the ladder. It's time to spin some magnets. It's time to get the good with the bad. Who gets the votes and who is getting dragged? Jamie, where would you like to start tonight? Proceeding? Peps, it's, it's the penultimate round. Let's start with a good. You want to start with a good? Because I want to talk about the one at the top here. Oh, beautiful. Well, then we might as well just quickly go and get the great man to hand out some. Three votes. Three votes. Three All votes. right. Three votes. Three votes. One more three Ooh. votes because we miss it. And Brownlow night's coming up. It who's is. going to take Charlie home tonight? Or at the Brownlow, who's going to sniff Charlie in the toilets? <laughs> All right. Peps, one of my highlights of the absolute weekend was Caleb Sarong's goal for Fremantle in the Derby, Derby, whatever you want to call it. Who gives a shit what you Was that it? Was it ass? Was it goal? class? Where do you lie on that one? It's fantastic. Oh, skill. It is skill. <laughs> it is absolute skill. It's a freak goal. It was a freak goal, but some players have the capacity to do that. And he's been goal of the year? Has he, has, has he snatched it? Mm, On the ground, well, in the pocket, actually, you can't get any tighter. Very, he was very lucky to get goal of the year because if you have a look at it, they actually had to take the ball out of the basic snack bar because <laughs> it was in the queue to pick up a couple of overpriced Jim Beam and Cokes and a couple of uh, oh. Fremantle bitters. That's how far the ball was out of bounds before he actually got it. What a goal. But it was what a great goal. goal. And it takes, goal. it takes a special type of person to kick goals like that. Have you ever told you about the two absolute pearls I kicked in the 1990 uh, under-16 preliminary final against Hull and Marine? No doubt you're probably going for a pass, were you? Oh, n- No. <laughs> no. When you're as talented as I am, you don't pass. You just go for you goals. Just, you just go lace out. Peps, I don't understand how the ball did what it did, though. Like, he was literally up against the point post, yep. and it still went through quite comfortably. Well, I, 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 used to play, I don't get it. I'll tell you what. I used to play football with a guy named Archie Padamizzi, mm-hmm. right? And we used to have shots for Jimmy Cans after the siren at training on a Thursday night. We'd have shots from there. And let's just say this way. He was going home a few tins under by the end of the night every single week because he would be, you know, he would be able to literally aim the ball at a forty-five degree angle yeah. where the goal line is, kick it on a point, and he can spin it. And he just he did exactly the same thing. So it was an absolute blinder of a goal. Um, and they're the goals that I like to see. But it was also it was I like the chain goals as well. And there was a few chain goals on the weekend as well, moving them from fullback all the way to full forward. And they're the ones I like to see because. When you see that, that's that's as David King would say, that's pure. That's pure yep. football. And um, I know the D's did an absolute corker. Port would have done one. No doubt Brisbane would have done one as oh. well too after their massive score on the weekend. So, yeah, Peps, I love what, a good ball. What's talking about goals? What about, what about one of uh, one of your boys? Oh, the Fritch Magnet. Bailey <laughs> Fritch. The Fritch Magnet. And he kicked – he didn't just kick a handful. He kicked a bag. Kicked the last five goals of the game. Yeah. For the D's. Yeah. He kicked three in three minutes. Breakout yeah, year for breakout year for him this year. Oh, yeah. He's kicked um 42 goals this year. Not bad. Not bad. Last year he was linked 21. So he's literally doubled what he did. Second string or third string or four? What do you what is he? Uh he's a third string. Yeah. Ben Brown number one, Tom McDonald two. Good return then, for a third got, string for, yeah. for a third stringer. And then you got Fritch and um Jackson sort of yep. floating through there as well, too. And then you got the serial pests. At their oh, yeah. so it's a nice little mix at the moment. And Ben Brown he hasn't been kicking bags, but I think the good thing is um, the good thing that I've been liking about what Ben Brown has been doing is been making contests, contests, been taking marks, but bringing it to ground exactly what we need to. I just hope Tommy McDonald can get back. Um, if he gets back this week, great. If he doesn't, no big deal. There's no pre finals by, which we'll get into very, very shortly, too. So, yeah, uh, yeah it was a great day by the Fritter, and he kicks straight, which he has, yeah. a, he has the, the capacity to push his kicks a fair bit. Because he leans back on the ball, doesn't lean forward and, and drive through. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was good to see too. But, um, yeah, it was good to see that. Now, here we go. What about your mob? Port Adelaide, oh. five in a row. What's it like? Tell me what it's like to win five games in a row and not one of them is a top eight team. It's – no, we would be uh, – technically, yeah, right. Um, LHF, mate. LHF should be next to the Peps. Peps, low, look, it's Low-hanging fruit. Well, if we could have your top – Four form, and you take our bottom eight form. Yep, wouldn't our teams be good? 
Yep. So you guys can't beat up on the on the guys. Uh, we don't that beat you... up on the. We don't beat up. We don't punch up on the um, dickers. <laughs> so no, Peps, um, five in a row. Five in a row. What? Um, I'm, yeah, pretty happy with that. Yeah. That's um, hold on, Craig, 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 Craig Jones from the Port Adelaide podcast is coming out. We beat GWS, who are currently in the top eight. But they weren't at the time you beat them, Craig. You can't, you can't say that. No, they I'm just dip, they just dipped out. It was a Sunday they, they game. Out. You, you've got to beat them when they're in the eight, Craig. But Peps, sorry, Peps. What I really did love, what I really loved, was the fact that Port Adelaide piled on 119 points after the 10 minute mark in the second quarter against Carlton. 19 goals. Boom. Not hey, one goal it. in reply. Not one goal in reply. What about Adam Saad? Oh. He went a bit. He went a bit. He went a bit. Um, Alistair Lynch, didn't he? Well, he and he was something. Uh, I, oh God! Well, he's got. To, he's got to get his money's worth. Um, uh, oh yeah, God, Peps, that, that was a, like, that was no great. Coach, he's losing his coach. They're losing by goodness knows how many. Port Adelaide and is back. How many did Charlie kick? Four. Why? Uh, because he's a gun. <laughs> team not in the top eight. Simple as that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. No, nah, happy uh, happy port supporter this week. Yeah, well, you, you deserve to be. You deserve to be Mates. sitting there third because you know you want to win this week to get that home final in Perth. Well, uh, the wow, the Perth crowd. What a How game. good was the Perth crowd? Finals have to be played in front of crowds. Unless be. it's a Melbourne home game. No, played in front of the crowds. Oh, doesn't matter. We, we feed off crowds. Yeah, definitely. Well, you wouldn't be used to it. Oh, well, you would be, but there'd be big, big. What are you talking about? We are, we've got way bigger crowds than you have over the last five or six years. What are you talking about? Well, when you realise that if you take Unless the you guys count away, your seagulls and the Hawkman. Hey, hey, hey. Our, at the our, MCG. Hey, excuse me. Our seagulls have to wear a college shirt. And the catering and staff. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, all Melbourne excuse supporters. Excuse me. If they're in front of the MCC, those seagulls wear college shirts, my friend. <laughs> all right. All righty. So some great news to come out of it. And it was, just a, it was actually a really good round of football. The Giants doing the number on the Cats on the Friday night has certainly opened up a lot of eyes. Mm. I think they the, it's funny enough that the team sitting in seven and eight at the moment, the Giants and the Dons, are they probably the two most informed teams moving in? Other than Hawthorne, yes. Yep, and Hawthorne too. Yep, so definitely there. All righty. Um, okay. Uh, I think now it's time to get the big boy out. Yes. That's obviously uh, all the good stuff, but unfortunately someone is going to have to uh, be getting pulled. So, Ron, are you there, my friend? Haley off. Alan Roth on. Bloody weak as piss. And I'll tell you what, there was plenty to be weak as piss over the weekend as well. We must have fit. Can I, can I start with something that's actually non-football related? Sure. I couldn't believe when I heard this. Tell you what's weak as piss. Beck Judd. <laughs> now, <laughs> she's coming out. Careful, at- careful. We're going down the Danny Laidley path, are we? No, we're not going down Danny Laidley path because nothing will be better than that red dress. But to say she's come out and said that, one well, of the only things that's got her through her COVID-affected days, and I'm paraphrasing here, has been her $1,700 robot vacuum. <laughs> what does this robot do, Peps? I, I, I don't know, but every time it's on, she's got a smile on her face. Does it clean her 15-bedroom mansion and her seven tennis courts and theatre rooms and games rooms and pools and everything? I, I don't know. I, I don't know, but it's, I'm tipping it's on vibrate mode. <laughs> $1,700. dollars for a robot. Imagine how many cleaners you could get for that amount of money. What's a cleaner? About 50 bucks an hour? 50 bucks an hour. They say that's like lots of hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I read that. I went, oh, good to see that. Yeah, you know, just working with the commoners. It's probably the Pep, cheapest reckon, model do, too. Do you reckon that vacuum's a bagless, or is it, or is it? I got a bag. Oh no, it's got its own little um, incinerator. Jesus, seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred dollars. I don't know what vacuum cleaners are worth, but surely not worth seventeen hundred, are they? I get bagged buying a Dyson, which are fantastic, but it's not a Dyson. That's a freaking seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred dollar robot vacuum. Come on, jeez, COVID taxes hit her hard. I oh, know she'll be she'll be she'll be she'll be she'll be, she'll be, she'll be saying she'll be lined up for for the doll soon. Well, apparently here in the C Judd three votes, uh, looking at buying a property up now. Get this up in Queensland uh-huh. to knock down so she can uh, apply her styling technique to a holiday home in Queensland. <sighs> you can't even fly there for the next four years. What's the point? 
No, nah, Footballer's Life, mate. Footballer's uh, Life. That'll, yeah, football, that, that'll be on Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did uh, you hear are, are the Hemsworths are selling their, um, their mansion? Yeah. Just buy the Hemsworth mansion at Byron Bay. Be done with I'll, it. I'll put in a bid. Yeah, for sure. It was a bit low. <laughs> All right, next one. You want to talk about um, our mate, our mate over there in the uh, in the West? Oh, go for it. No, you talk about oh, it. You love it? him. Okay. This guy's a knob. What's his name? The Premier Mike McGowan. The Mike McGowan. All right. So Uncle Mike. Uncle Mikey, right? He, he, he's the uncle that you're happy to get the Christmas presents off, mm-hmm. but you don't actually want to go and shake his hand because you'll squeeze it too hard. Or he'll touch it appropriately. <laughs> Uncle Mikey. <laughs> yeah, Mike McCoward. I like that one, Joel Michael. I like that one. So he's, this bloke is a nuffy. We are literally walking into him and saying, here is the AFL grand final. Mm. Adelaide aren't going to get it because they're Adelaide, okay? Yeah. And their, their restrictions are too hard. We are giving you the showpiece, the thing that you've been asking for for years. Play the AFL grand final at the new Optus Stadium. Yeah. With crowds, it'll bring so much money into the economy. It'll be fever pitch. You saw what happened in Brisbane. It'll just take football in Perth to another level. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He comes out and says, well, we'll just wait and see. I'm, 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 I'm with him in one sense, Peps. Remember when they kicked out every supporter about 20 minutes before a game. And look, Geelong did the same thing down to the Queensland, the, the Suns supporters. That's the only thing. West but Coast love to close something a, quickly. Yeah, but West, yeah, but Perth, Perth kicked out what? How many? Um, uh, for 40 something thousand. Yeah. You just said Geelong kicked the Gold Coast Suns out. <laughs> it was 16 people. <laughs> that was including the ones they gave the free tickets to. Just okay. gotta be, just gotta be, just, just, gotta, be, just gotta be careful here, around right? the, be careful around the WA people. They're a bit weird. Other than Joel Michael, who's a ripper. Oh, Joel Michael's a ripper. Yeah, they're yeah. a bit weird. Back to Melbourne, top bloke. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, loving the comments on the chat tonight, mate. It's absolutely sensational. If you're not, if you never joined us for a Tuesday night live, people, eight PM Australian Eastern Standard Time. Get on the Lace Out Facebook page. We we broadcast live when you hear this. You can get on the chat and be part of the show. We love it every single week. Yeah, um, Peps. Just wait and see. Just let's let's talk about yes. it. But I tell you what, if there was a Perth team in there, well, open arms. Come on, bring them in. <laughs> bring them in. But no. Yeah. Stage. Um, Peps, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, so let's just I'm just gonna read the sentence as it says yep. on our on our notes, and yep. then we're gonna leave it at that, okay? Okay. MRO, it sucks. Nothing needs to be more to be said. How many so watch how many go lynchy as there are no consequences for striking if not injured. Obviously, we're talking about the the, the protected species out there. Oh, Jesus! Christ. And as you said, as we've as we've known, it's always been a consequences lead to whatever the weeks are. This week, we've seen a complete reversal where the consequences actually don't matter to anything anymore. <laughs> you actually cannot script it. One week earlier, you get two people pulled up for dangerous tackles with one having a concussion. This week, both arms pinned. You haven't been able to do that for four years. Nothing. Not a fine, not uh, a weak sanction, nothing. Yeah, it, it is a joke. It, it is a joke. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have anything. How can one get a fine, right? Zane, Zane Cordy got a fine. Mm-hmm. But the guy didn't did have the ball. Mm-hmm. Hawkins knocked the bloke out. Mm-hmm. Pinned both arms. You can't do that. Both arms. He didn't have the ball, gets nothing. Mm-hmm. Selwood takes a guy's head off. Well, not. He knocked him, but it was a, he was running through him and missed him. Yeah. Gets nothing. Uh, was, it, was it Sheed? I think it was Sheed. Punched the Freo bloke in the guts. Yeah. Behind to do decapitate somebody like are we talking squirrel grips here i don't even want to talk about because i'm bored of the geelong protected oh. species because i think it's it's we know that by now geelong's protected we know this yep yeah. they are protected and i guarantee selwood and hawkins will be hall of fame not because of what they did on the field but because they categorized into the what 
Good day, bloke. Jamie. Good bloke. Good bloke. Good bloke. The Lenny Hayes. The Lenny Hayes category. Good bloke yes. syndrome. Yeah. Um, hey, Peps, let's talk about the rising star. You take it, mate. No, 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 yours. no, no. No, think quick things. A okay, couple of quick sure. questions. Uh, one quick question from Ross Bartlett. Now, the Donk, he's been following us for a couple of years now, an absolute yes. legend, right? Yes. He's asked me a question, and I think it's got a lot of relevance to it. So it's simply this. Hey, Pep, as a Richmond supporter, what's the best way to spend my September? And he's asking me being a Melbourne supporter. Well, Ross, <laughs> normally I'd be going up to Chateau La Pepe at Le Mont uh, We normally go each September because we don't normally do anything during September, but it's locked down now. So I'm a little bit stumped. I'm actually in the same situation as you, Um my team will be playing finals and the first time in a long time yours won't be. So um, maybe you could just watch the Ds, um, hopefully beat everybody and, and win a flag and then when we can go out and celebrate on the um, maybe a K1 run down Buller. Maybe that's an issue, something that you could do. Or maybe you could just sink a few more of the uh, Richmond Carlton Draft speciality cans. I know you got three slabs worth from 2017, 19 and 20. Um, enjoy hey. that. Could also do a couple of fireball shots with a uh, meatball. You go ahead, do some do some fireball with the meatball. You could do that. It's not Plenty of things that you can do, Ross. Plenty of things that you can do. But um, normally, yeah, Chateau de Peps at uh, Mount Buller is beautiful this time. Uh, Jazzy Chatsy uh, spoke about Magic on the weekend on Cox. Mm. Bit of the old round arm, bang, hit, bit of action. Coxie out for the season now. The done out Ooh. like a light. Yep. Mason Cox. Who who hit? Magic door, hit him. Did he? Yeah. What, in a practice game? Mm-hmm. Deliberately or an accident? I, I, I've only seen like a snippet of the footage. It looked pretty um, it looked pretty full on. Well, probably deserved it. I don't know. Jazz, please jump in. What, what probably, was it? He probably was talking about his debut on Anzac Day <laughs> continuously or his uh, 2018 preliminary final. And Magic, uh, just shut up. We're sick of it. It makes it worse with that shit accent that you've got. We love that. We, we love. We love our. We love Mr. Craig Wessels, the uh, the, oh. the, the Yank AFL podcast. Um, AFL House talking about disagree with Tom Hawkins has done a stack of an AFL House begins a construction on the gallows for him. Well, yeah, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, when when one rule is applied for four years and doesn't get applied, it's it's frustrating, especially concussion involved. That's right, Craig. We love you, but you, there's there's precedent here. We know you're a Geelong supporter, but there is precedent here. So uh, they love Geelong. They love Geelong. But that's okay because it's a longer season and plenty of things. Hey, and last team, teams limping into the finals after dominant years, cats, dogs in particular, that's got to suck as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. All right, let's talk about well, – let's, let's talk some good news, Peps, because there is a bloody great story for Melbourne. I mean, like, if the momentum and the wave behind the power of this Melbourne wave is not crashing towards a grand final, there's just one more accolade to throw at you guys. I mean, what else can you guys do wrong this season? Peps, take it away with the uh, riser this week. Oh, Jake Bowie, what an absolute superstar. So Jake Bowie is – our rising star for round 22 for Melbourne in only his third game. And that makes the fourth, I'll say that again, fourth, fourth, four-time rising star winner for the year for the Ds, which is huge, huge. And with Luke Jackson, we'll probably win the overall award. And I think everybody listening to this now and everybody uh, watching us live will probably agree he has been probably the most consistent yeah. and has probably grown the most uh, in a role that is not a midfielder. That's exciting to see. But, yep, uh, had an absolute ripper. He picked up uh, 18 disposals, six marks against the Crows, four tackles, a few score involvements there. He's only 175 centimetres, and I think he went at around about 76% um, efficiency as well too. So since he's come in, he's slotted in perfectly, and he's exactly what Melbourne needs. Doesn't miss many. Doesn't miss many targets. A um, little bit of Caleb Daniel with a red hair instead of a helmet. So yep. exciting times. And they've got um, uh, Bailey Laurie also hasn't played this year. Similar mold as well too. So the future's bright with the D's. But good on to you there, the red-headed the son of a former uh, saint yeah. as well. Exactly, Brett Bowie uh, didn't yep. play enough games to get the father son. But you know, Saints loss is the Melbourne's game. So uh, great work to uh, Ziggy. Ziggy Bowie um, <laughs> for getting the rising star. All righty. So, Jay 
dog. It's your time, mate. This is where you shine brighter than that bald spot on the top of your bonds. All right. Rounds with our news breaker, everybody. Jamie the J Dog Wallace. Over to you, big fella. Mate, round 23, finally, finally, finally locked in. We're going to talk about another part of this whole finals piece, but locked in, we can confirm it all, which is very exciting because there are some games in here that do have huge implications in the final makeup of that ladder. Friday night, Western Bulldogs poured out a late at Marvel. Saturday, we've got Hawthorne versus Richmond, Sydney Swans versus Gold Coast, Brisbane Lions versus West Coast Eagles. Must win there for the for the Eagles. Geelong Cats versus Melbourne. So uh, two versus, uh, sorry, one versus two and three versus four are playing each other this weekend, which do have huge ramifications for uh, the makeup of the, the finals. And Carlton GWS at the end uh, on Saturday. Sunday, St. Kilda Fremantle, Essendon, Collingwood, and then Adelaide Crows versus North Melbourne um, in Adelaide. So... Mm. All bar, so two games at Marvel and one game at MCG. Hmm. What do you think? Pretty exciting. Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Not, not a bad, not a bad ending. No, I think it's a good way. It's a good look when you've got the top four playing each other. You can't ask for much more than that. And no. you've got teams like most of the most of the time. It's really you know done. It's done. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. not this year. I still think the, the two teams that are in it are the ones that are going to make it, which in the eight is exciting for Eston supporters because they've been talking it up all year, especially yep. the last few weeks. Oh. And um, GWS, they're, they're peaking at the right time and they've still got a couple more to come in. So yeah, whether they're going to be able to do it, I don't know. They might be still a little bit sept- um, sceptical, especially in their front half. I'm still not sold on their forward line yet. Okay. But Toby Green, my God, love this, love him, absolutely love him. Okay. Um, just a cut, quick thing. There seems to be a bit of a, a, a message coming through at the moment. We're talking about uh, people moving on, et cetera. One of the things that's coming up is Sam Wiedemann to the um, to the Kangaroos. Mm. And they're asking, why don't I think he'll go? I think it's simply this. You've got Brown. We've got um, Donald. He mm-hmm. does slot in there. He's just got to take his opportunity with both hands. To and Jackson, that. who can slide in there yeah, as well. Jackson, Jackson's a bit different. He's, he's more of a ruck rover type, I yeah. would say. So I would, I don't think that unless North can give us something of some really tangible value, why would you go to North? Maybe How many? Like game time, but he cannot be the, the, the key forward. He needs to be the second or the third option. How long has so, we been on the list at, at, at Melbourne for now? Five seasons. Okay, so he's not quite free agent or restricted free agent. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, so I think five seasons. Okay. So I reckon sign him up for three. You're going to pay him 500 grand for him, which is about what he's on at the moment, and then goes in the free agency. Beautiful. Like I said, you want to go to a club, you need to go to a club that's – why would you want to leave if a club is going to be finishing in the top four of the seat? Why would you want to go anywhere else? You know, yeah. There's a future coming through as well too. So whatever his decision is – it's his decision. I think the club will, the club wants him. Yep. It just depends on if he wants to stay there. All right. Cool. All right. Let's go through some of our news items because we are already way behind, which is awesome. Um, some great news, Peps. Finally, some good news. Mm-hmm. Willa Rioli's two suspension for doping is ending at midnight on Friday. So hopefully we might see Willa Rioli return to the West Coast Football Club uh, and play this weekend. Captain Luke Shuey has made it clear as an excited player group would welcome the Premiership Stars' immediate AFL selection with no lingering attention about his return. Rioli will be available for the Eagles' clash against Brisbane on Saturday with his suspension for twice substituting urine in doping test to end at midnight on you said Friday. You twice? You did it twice, twice didn't you? Mm-hmm. Twice. <clears throat> yep. The 26-year-old broke his silence publicly in a video released to the West Coast members on Tuesday morning, expressing his excitement um, at an in, at an imminent return to the game. So, if the uh, the Eagles are yet to declare if the skillful small midfielder will return to the AFL or Waffle this week, but Rioli made it clear he is ready to play. So, let's oh, hope well, he's he's better off playing for West Coast because. They've got 22 running around that aren't doing anything at the moment. <laughs> let's get, let's um, make sure you hide all the Gatorade bottles after the game and we will be in a good spot. And yellow cordial and everything like that, absolutely. Yep. Yep. And um, Peps, yep. 
pretty excited. I mean, this guy's chucked out to the wilderness and, and no one really had an idea of what was happening with, with, with Rioli for such a long time. 700 days. I don't have anything to say, Jamie. Yeah. Okay. He probably would have got less if he got caught. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, he's put himself in that same position. So you've got to have way at one or the other. Yep. Willie Billy Rioli, we're getting in from the chats, boy. <laughs> Willie Billy Rioli. <laughs> cool. Mm. All right. Next one. Um, oh, this one's the best, isn't it? Yeah. It's just going nuts. Yeah, absolutely. So look. On the weekend, we know we're going to talk about Carlton here. Just a quick one, not going to go too much into depth of it because there's obviously still more to play at, but it is the never ending story at the moment with Carlton. Um, two big storylines. Basically, let's just talk about very quickly at the top. Peps, how do you feel with David Teague? I feel he's been completely um, uh, not supported. Shafted. Shafted. Two years shafted and Bent then over. And basically, then dragged around Wind. behind, dragged behind the coach to just parade this dead coach. Oh. Uh, so it, it's been horrendous the way they've treated him. The way they've treated him. So th- there's things that I heard, and I can't believe this has happened, right? Mm-hmm. So he's he's coached predominantly through two COVID affected seasons. Yeah. He hasn't even had a football director to lean on no. for virtually all of this season. He got support from John Worsfold, who's in a completely different state. Mm-hmm. Wasn't Robert Walls at one stage helping out? I haven't heard what's happened. Right? Yeah. He was supposed to and, jump, jump on and help, yeah. And out of all of this, he's had they've had injuries as well. kerno has been gone for a good portion of the season. Cripps hasn't been at his best. Uh, Walsh has been okay but has had his issues, especially in the probably last four weeks. I know he didn't play last week, but yeah. he's had his issues as well too, all right? So if you put all this together and mm. he has still had – the second best percentage of out of any coach since um, for Wayne Britton, for yep. Brett Ratton, it's not right, mate. He, no. he has been completely shafted. And we know a Carlton. Carlton love the Messiah. Okay, if you went and looked on Good Friday and the great man hanging on the cross, he would have been wearing a Carlton jumper. That, that's, what, that's the way it is with this mob. And they'll get in Ross the boss, whoever it's going to be, yep. and – I don't think Carlton's list is that good anyway. Like, they've yeah. got a spine, but outside of that, like, they make it – it's not that crash hot. No. And so, Liam, Pickering, I, Liam Pickering was on SEN, and, he, and this is this is word for what he said. He says, it's been a vicious, deliberate, and nasty attack on a young coach in my view. I think it's been absolutely disgusting. These journos and other people wouldn't have the guts to do that to a Hawthorne coach, Alistair Clarkson, or anyone with a senior portfolio. They pick on a young coach who's coached less than two full years in make it all about him. And I think it's a disgrace to be perfectly honest. Everyone that's saying he's gone before the end of the day, he's gone before Friday, they're barracking for it. It's a sickening way to earn a living and I can't stand it to be honest. I'm not (laughs) doubting their sources or opinions and I'm hoping that they don't sack tea by these so-called experts who think they know best. And you know what set it off while he's gone? It's as simple as this. Quit this week so Sayers could come in. And this is what annoys me more than anything, right? So Ladudache quit for the reason one of the not, he didn't want to sack his third coach. He wants that yeah. to Sayers. Yeah. But this bloke Sayers has been on the board for I think something like nine years. Mm-hmm. He signed Teague up in the first place. Yeah. So and then to hold a mid season review. But I think the with worst part there, that's been Peps, going on, is an oh, it's, it is. And crap, to publicly man. say you're having a review, because Lee Matthews said reviews happen all the time in football, happen all the time. But when you go public with it, you're looking for a story. You're looking to create some waves out there. And that's what they've done to a young coach. Yep. And, is it all, so, and, and this is the thing, Peps, and one thing I'll, I'm going to tear for a little bit here. Do we put too much on the coach? I mean, Carlton now have had this list for, they've had three rebuilds or three mini rebuilds. One 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 ten minute period, we can see them playing the best football you've ever seen, most pure football, and then the next forty go missing completely. Is that purely on the coach, or is that also the players to take the some? Players of that? have to take some responsibility on this, mate. The senior players. No, senior pl- players. Full stop. Yeah. Right. If Two and a half years. Hit, you know, That's it, J Dog. If you can't hit a target, you can't hit a target, right? Like, there's enough people who watch this show and listen to us on a weekly basis. They 
if you get drafted to play AFL football, you can play the game. The problem yep. is, is that you get overcoached to the nth degree that any flair or the whole reason you got in gets totally stripped out of you. Yeah. So you can't tell me people like Petrevsky Seaton can play football. Paddy mm. Dow can play football. These guys can play. They're just hamstrung and they're coached to the nth degree. How are they supposed to thrive and let what, they, what they're capable of doing when they're bloody handcuffed all the time? Yeah. And this is what um, uh, Picker said also said on Saturday. He goes, I just think it's disgusting. He's had to defend himself, which is even more staggering. I think it's pathetic. So Tigger to come out there and say he had all these phone calls from all these coaches and 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 how Dimmer gave him a call and said he went through the same thing before Richmond had their success. Once again, I, you, you do have to question and go, why aren't Carlton coming out? Why aren't Carlton coming out and supporting him and saying him. their failures? They don't want him. Well, that's as clear. It's 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 evident. And no, so what I, they've done instead of being instead of being respectful to David Teague, they've dragged him through three weeks of this circus. Not knowing that he's not going to be there by the end of next week, and just think, dragged him through it. I think uh, I think it was Lee Matthews said the the only thing guaranteed about being a coach is that one day you'll be sacked. And yeah. I think this is a perfect example of it. This is a guy that's been absolutely reamed. Yeah, and he's got the best. He's got the best. Yeah, they've got defensive issues. Get a defensive coach in there. There's been teams. My team is one of them who struggled defensively for so long. They get a defensive coach in. Yep, makes it's the development as well too. What's the development like at Carlton? Probably shit house. You can't <laughs> put it all. The players spend more time with their line coaches than the head coach. Yeah, and someone I was reading, I was reading something early today about the Judashay came out with a, a letter to the members, and he spoke about how we're no longer in the in the red and we're in the black and we're doing this and this and this. But Who what they were saying you? is, it is so out of touch. Yes, you may have got your books back in in, in order. But the culture is destroyed at Carlton. Oh, mate. You, you is don't that the talk, expense? Mate, you don't have to talk to me about cultures at football clubs. Mm. They can absolutely they, they kill. I, 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 look, I, I, I feel for Teague. I mean, we've got up here and we've bashed him a few times, gave him a couple of clips. But at the same time, we're not the ones every week writing news stories about it. We talk about it because it's, it's, it's what our show is. But you just got to feel for him. Like to spend three weeks having to front up to media, to the same questions, to the same pressure, to see yourself in the papers everywhere, knowing he would know that he's not going to get the a job end of the week. The first question he is, are going to be here next week? Yeah. Exactly. No, it's, just, it's, it's a rough way to drag someone through it, and I think it's disgraceful by Carlton that they have done that to someone, a first-time coach. That's shit ass. Doesn't anyway, so on the back of that, they're talking about Ross Lyon potentially coming in as a coach because Carlton jump at shadows. It's as simple as that. Exactly right. Um, just one quick thing. I know this is not part of it, but one of the other things I want to um, – one thing I want to quickly throw at you is how good was the dimmer Jonathan Brown last week too? <laughs> How good yeah. was it? Uh, and then what made it even better was the coverage on the weekend. Brownie on Friday? So, yeah. Friday. Yeah. So are you going to throw uh, Lynchy into the ruck? <laughs> and he just couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, I think Dim has been um, a little bit uh, out of control the last um, few weeks. As soon as their season went kaputski. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, give it, I'll give it to him. Three premierships in four years. Not bad. Oh, mate, I'll take one premiership in 64 years or whatever it is. All right. Uh, pre-finals buy has been scrapped. No. Praise. Although, Peps. I have a question, though, for you later. Yes, on. go. It's a listener oh. question. All right. Oh, okay, I've got a question for you on this. Okay. Unfortunately, the grand final date is still locked in, so that little buy is going to be put in somewhere. Where would you want it put? Well, that was my listener question, so we might as well go with our listener question for this no. week now, Sorry. which is simply this. Would you prefer the finals buy to be A, before the preliminary final weekend, or B, after the preliminary final weekend, meaning there's a Super Bowl-like two-week entrance into the grand final for this year only. That's our listener question. Pre-preliminary final buy or I won't answer. pre-grand final buy? I know what my answer would be. I know what my answer is. And I think we're going to be exactly the same. Let's say it yeah. together. Pre-grand final. Absolutely. Simple. Because it just alleviates any issues with uh, COVID. 
It alleviates any injuries that could be potentially hanging over. If someone gets concussed, it also allows them to be able to play as well too. There's so many more benefits than having to, if you're a prelim finalist and you win your first semi-final or your qualifying final, you're going to get game, week off, game, week off, game. Yeah. One, week, one game in 21 days is, is not. Well, that's what, that's what we had last year. Probably I had that last year. Push it. Pre-grand Push final it. by easily. Okay. Uh, yeah. And um, I think that's it, big boy. That's it for the news. All righty. Yes, it is. So it's not, now time to um, bring in one of our newer segments, which is we've been going gangbusters, j Dog, since we brought this one in because it just talks about what's been going on um, with a little bit of the money and mm-hmm. it's time to... Uh, here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Talk. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> dollar, dollar. Six on the mic. That's right. I'm here. We'll take you through all the bling, bling when it comes to contracts with our segment that's been going nuts, which is called Splashing the Cashing. All righty. So, got to splash a little bit of cash and talk about contracts. At the moment. Now, here's the thing. Resignings at the moment are a little bit slow, but I can see them peaking in the next couple of weeks. Just a couple, just to throw at you at the moment. Nick Quilton, mm-hmm. he's got another year. Good on you, young fella. And Ed Kerno is getting a, another year with the Blues. He will be 31 next year. Um, and in my eyes, that generates him for free agency to an automatic transition over to Geelong. <laughs> so he should be at Geelong next year. As you know, they only target players over 30. V-line ticket down to Geelong. V-line ticket. You get a V-line ticket and a pensioner's card. Okay. But yet to sign, uh, just a couple of yet to signs coming in. Ken and McIntosh, a deal is looming two or three years. Bastia Hooley, still no word. He's going to go around again. Adam Chera, it's either going to be Carlton or Free O. Zane Cordy triggered another year for 2022, which is good for him. Yeah. Uh, North Jacob Edwards and St. Kilda's impressive Cooper Sharman are also looking to be locked away very shortly as well. Um, I've seen a bit of Cooper Sharman. Very, very, very sharp. I like that. So that's awesome. Uh, the rookies can now spend four years on a list, which is up from three. So there's a couple like um, Matt Owies from uh, the Blues. Mm-hmm. He's going to be going into his fourth, and the AFL now have pushed it out to four years, which is good. Yeah. So that, that's good for them. Um, but most of the contract news revolves about people being picked up in the midseason drafts. And so, like, as we know, you'll know, it looks like a lot of them have been picked up in the midseason. We'll probably get that because they only signed up for six months. Yeah. A lot of them will either stay on or – we will be gone from there too. So, And Sean Atley has also gone up north as well too. So that's a, a bit of a shame as well too. Now, when we have a look at the um, – so is there anything from there, J-Dog, that sort of catches your eye? Anything else that you've heard? Mm, no, I mean like just some thoughts. Basher Hawley, I don't think we'll go around again. Um, what about so Rich, uh, well, he's – He's he's off what to the uh, off to the again? off to the off to the table to get some some surgery done. Um, yeah, he'll yeah, go around again. Another, uh, no doubt, he'll be recovering in a day spa with his wife. You'll see on Instagram. <laughs> um, oh. No, I I think that's about it at the moment. I mean, there's probably there's probably some other players that are uh, yeah not far from it. All right. So as we know, that's the um, splash the cash for this round. That also means now that we're about to go into our next segment, Uh, another segment because it's good for people to get a brand new contract, but unfortunately there's going to be people who are going to be not getting one this year. And to these guys, we um, we want to just give you a little bit of a farewell and say thank you for everything that you've done for us career-wise. And... uh, Did I disappoint you? Starts with Eddie Betts. 17 seasons. All goal of the years. Let the 638 I saw the goals. Best of 75 2016. And you. three all strains. An absolute legend. And like I said, if you saw his interview a couple so of I days ago, around the races and side of things. Right. Absolute gun. You're Just so put a smile on your face every so single night. time. Sorry. Okay. Kale Hooker, 2014 All Australian. 2009, 2019, 219 games <laughs> with the red and black. He's going, what do you reckon Kale Hooker's um, will be remembered for at his time in this? Or oh, pointing fingers? Oh, it could be pointing fingers. I think it'll be, I reckon he, he did his best work without the ball. 
chasing Buddy Franklin down the wing when Buddy took six bounces and slotted one from the from the boundary. You see Hooker doing these ones. <laughs> That's the only thing you'll be remembered for. Did nothing is that else. when Buddy? Is that when Buddy jumped over to Essence? Ah, no, that was another one. That was oh, another okay. one. All right. That's a good one. Uh, Jared Harbour, our personal favourite one. Two hundred and sixty-one games. This guy's been. 191 for the Suns. He was the first player to ha- play 100 games and 150 games for the Suns. Played yep. the rest of the Dogs and was a BNF in 2018. Jack Homsch from Port Adelaide uh, and the Suns will also be retiring. Any any words that you'd like to share about Homsch? Just a just a real ripper of a bloke. I mean, at one stage he was looking at towards maybe our next captain and just form dropped and it's a it's a it's a brutal business football. It is a brutal business. Uh, Jordan Murdoch, obviously the Cats and gone over to the Suns this year. Hasn't had much of a run, unfortunately, whether injury or just can't get a game. It says a lot for him. Um, but all the best for him. And Zach Smith, one of the original Suns who then was a Cat and then was a Sun, um, is also retiring as well. And the one that we heard today, yeah, uh, number 12 from the Tigers, David Ashbury, three premierships, 155 games for Richmond. Kicked three goals in his first game ever. And I think kicked six for his career. Uh, we'll yeah. be turning. Uh, we'll be playing his last few last games. This. And look, there's going to be plenty more retirements over the next couple of weeks as well. Too. So as soon as we know, and the boots oh, are hung up, we'll say Levi goodbye. Levi Casbolt. Oh, Levi Casbolt. Yes, he's well, he hasn't got a new contract. He's so not I going to be playing for Colin Afkar uh, next year. Oh no! So I haven't included the ones that haven't got contracts yet because they may okay. not get a lifeline. Okay. But at this stage, uh, no, they're the ones that are, are going to be hanging up the boots as well too. And there's some others like Neville Jetta, Nathan Jones from the D's are a couple that may not be, be going around next year. Um, Hurley from Essendon maybe as well. So as soon as yeah. we know, you'll know. But um, all we'll say is goodbye our lovers and goodbye our friends who have been the one, been the one for me. Love it. <laughs> Radio. Injuries, round them out, big fella. Some oh, massive injuries. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, massive injuries. All right, so let's go through a few of these. Richmond's, uh, Richmond skipper Trent Cotcher has suffered a sprained PCL in his knee and will miss the final round of the season against Hawthorne despite suffering the injury in the second quarter uh, loss to GWS. He's just not going to make it. So Trent Cotcher is done tuned. for the season. Stay tuned. Day spars. <laughs> Options are coming. Uh, Sydney have confirmed that Nick Blakey, uh, what are they called, Lizard? Um, is he called Lizard? Yep, he's called he is, Lizard. Or something. He's got a neck. Um, will not play again this season after sustaining a crack to his right fibula during the third quarter of Saturday's match against North Melbourne. The club said it was seeking specialist advice on the best course of treatment for the injury, and surgery was an option. Um, so, unfortunately, yeah, um, he's turned to a bit of a, a bit of a gun back there um, for Sydney Swans off the um, it's a off big the back out one. For their finals. That's a big out for them. Huge one, uh, big one, and we we said it on last Tuesday, but just sort of confirming more information now. But Tom Stewart is set to undergo surgery after suffering a potentially season-ending foot injury. Stewart sustained an injury at a marking contest at training on Thursday and has been reduced to a moon boot and crutches as he awaits further clarity. Um, uh, Chris Scott has confirmed that he has this really, really shitty injury that undoes a lot of football players and a lot of just people who play sport. The Liz Frank uh, damage to uh, sort of the midfoot um, and it's just a real prick to heal. Um, there's just no blood flow to it and it's a really hard one to get right. So um, good luck. It just affects weight bearing on that side and also then all your all your dynamic movements. So it's a prick. Um, so good luck because he is a huge out for Geelong, a massive out. Um, Melbourne could get a couple of uh, guns back in. Jack Viney, he's come back from suspension. Tom McDonald is back. And Stephen May had uh, a bit of soreness and was managed for round 23. So um, that could be a, a good little uh, run in. Troops supporting Melbourne for their game against Geelong. I take two of the three. You take two of the three? Two you the leave three. Tom McDonald back? Nope. Stephen May? Nope. Jack Viney not in your midfield? Because they've been playing better football when he's not there. Any Melbourne supporter will tell you at the moment. He's sort of. Changes the mix a bit. Well, unless he tags, my- unless he goes to tag somebody, that's what I'd do. Yeah. But you get Harms to do that. But Harms has been playing better footy since mine he's not there too. So, <laughs> and uh, uh, West Coast, yeah, kind of West lose. Coast, yeah. Um, made tougher. So, not only have they uh, lost basically seven of the last 10 games, 
Um, Tim Kelly's been ruled out with an knee injury. So he was subbed off uh, during the – what was he subbed off? The uh, third quarter? It doesn't really matter because they're not going to be playing finals anyway. <laughs> um, so he's, he's unavailable for that must-win clash against Brisbane. So, uh, yeah, sucked in West Coast. Okay. So uh, we're going to whip through this week's listener question because there's a couple of quick things I need to ask Jamie about and I'm going to answer them as well too. So some of those questions came in from the listeners last week. Um, so I'm going to rip through these. Jamie, question for you from yeah. Philae Ming Josh. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever willingly broken into and then moved somebody else's car in an elaborate prank on the owner of the car? Um, Define broken in because from what – if, if, if a key happens to fit the door and start the engine that doesn't belong to that car, is that a... That's a, that's, that's is, a, good, is, that's a good prank. That's because that's, 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 that's not breaking in. The key fit, the, the key fit in the engine and in the door. Therefore, how do you prove it's a crime? Exactly right. If a tree falls down in the forest and no one's there to see it, it's actually <laughs> Exactly right. Hey, uh, this is one from J.D. McNair. Hey, J-Dog. And mm. Peps, what's the what moments are you most proud of from your involvement in any sport? Oh, great question. I'll tell you mine. You go, you go first. I've got two. First yep. one was playing 377 games for the super Eastern District Football League Club East Keeler, my second home growing up and still is to a degree. Yep. And when I was 16, I made 103 against Keeler, not out. And then mm-hmm. on the same day, Big Trev, my dad made a hundred as well. Yeah, so that's the other one for me as well. Um, for mine, it's probably um, when my wife did her first triathlon. Hey, um, that was super! Nice. Like she's not, she's not, she's not really into the whole endurance world, and that's okay. But so she did her first triathlon, and then um, I think less than a couple of months later, she did uh, a ten k run as part of the triathlon as well. So she just shuffled through and got through. So that's pretty that's pretty good to see that. And what about when you were ranked number nine in the world for your age group? It doesn't compare to seeing when you see other people have success. Yeah, that's the difference between you and I. Um, <laughs> rightio. And uh, another one is from a guy, and there's a few people who'd be able to answer this one as well too. Tommy Walsh. Hi, Peps and J-Dog. Big fan. Just starting my new podcast. Any tips? Pure footy. Mm-hmm. Tommy, it's as simple as this, mate. Grab yourself a mic and just have a crack. Have a crack yep. and have some fun. That's how we start. And don't care if you how many listeners you get because I'd rather have quality listeners than quantity who don't care about us. Okay. Well, um, it's people can every I say single week and I love it. Can I have one caveat, Peps? Yes. Just watch your audio. Try and have at least a decent audio. You don't want it sounding horrendous. And Peps, you and I were guilty of this in our first season. Oh. You and I. Go back, you know, to, go back to episodes one between one and fifth. We had, we had, we had. We're talking into the microphones of our phone things. Um, if you can oh. splurge a little bit, just just get, get a, a little bit better mic. Get a better mic. It makes a massive difference. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so there are some of the questions that came in. I think they're all relevant as well too. So for everybody who's part of listening to question, it's simply this. I know a few have already answered it. What would you prefer? A buy before the preliminary final weekend, a preliminary final weekend, or after a buy before the finals or before the grand final. Awesome. Rightio. J Dog, it is one week at a time, which is literally this. What game are you looking forward to this week the most? And I think we can both be selfish, week, can't normally, we? We can pretty much do this straight away. I'm looking forward to Melbourne and the Cats. You'd be looking forward to Port Adelaide and the Doggies because we're both Absolutely. top four teams. But you know what? I'm also going to be a little bit interested in to see who's going to slot in those final couple of spots in the eight, but I don't think it's going to change, to be honest. Yeah, look, uh, the GWS game I'm interested in just because, you know, if they lose, yeah, no, there is. there is. In fact, it's actually not a bad week of football other than the, like the, the the Crows and North and stuff like that. I'm not oh, really no, interested I want to see in. The crow. I want to see the, the Kangas win again. No, I'm not. I don't care about no, that anymore. Why, J-Dog? Because if they win, we get a bit of this. <laughs> That's why we want the Kangas to win because I get to play that every freaking week. Okay. Oh, I right. love it. Um, but yeah, they're the games that we're looking for. But you know, it's the last week in a football for a lot of clubs. There's going to be players who are finishing up for this week, and it's going to be a shame to see them go. So hopefully, all the fingers crossed. But um, hey, listeners, that is our round 22 recap and review um, for the week. So we've got one week left before. 
the big boys come out to play, which is our finals series. So make sure that you're part of it. Um, thank you for everybody who's tuning in tonight. Leave a review for us. Jump on iTunes. Share it with your friends. Get out of the 5K zone. Risk a $5,000 fine <laughs> just so you can tell everybody how awesome we are. Hey, if Pips. In the state, in the country, even if you're overseas like Craig Wessels is with us tonight. Yeah. Tell everybody about Lace Out because I tell you what, J-Dog, it's what? It's how? Yeah, like your footy. It's how you want your footy lace out style. Yes, J-Dog, before we wrap up. No, no, I'm just saying, um, thanks for everyone who joined us today. Craig, I know you guys, I th- you think you're something like seven in the morning or something crazy or whatever time it is over there. Um, thank you for joining us, Craig, because that's from the US. Well done. Yeah, and we love him. And I did an interview with Craig earlier in the year. So if you can have a chance, get on. He's an absolutely cracking boat. And his oh. podcast, A Yank on the Footy, is an absolute cork. And he know- he definitely knows his stuff. Um, also. So the complete opposite of us two. Joel, Michael, and I have already had this conversation, yep. but uh, Savoy have released a new flavoured biscuit, yep. rosemary and sea salt. Absolutely get on it. Okay. And the last thing a couple of people have asked is I'm actually wearing tonight for the first time a, a lace-out hoodie with a bit of a thing, a bit of a concept. Tell us what you think. They might be uh, doing a bit of work with the jazz boy, Rue boy, uh, maybe getting some stuff set up. So if you you keen to get one or maybe got some ideas let us know as well too so but um have a great week listeners enjoy your last week of football if your team is not going to be playing in september and if it is join us next week because i tell you what we're going to be getting into the finals time this time next week j dog how do you want your footy great man i want it lace out peps have a great week listeners and go (laughs) jeez see you listeners thanks for listening to our latest episode If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes. I'm your host, Chris Pepper, and with Jamie Wallace, we give you your footy how you want it. Ice out.